Inverse function is defined in this box. Let f be a one-to-one -one function. Then g is the inverse function if f of g of x equals x and g of f of x equals x. So notice they're saying if you plug one function into the other function, f of g of x is going to equal x. And also you have to plug it in the other way, g of f of x equals x. Okay? Um, so, in order to prove that something's a function, you're going to have to do both of those things. Example 3 says, let f of x equal 2x plus 5 and g of x equal 1 half x minus 5. Is g the inverse of f? So, in order for that to happen, you're going to have to have both of these things come true. And so, that's what we're going to do. We're going to check and see if both of those things come true. So, Let's start with f of g of x. So the function f says 2 times something plus 5. And what we are going to do is plug in the other function. So let's distribute the 2. 2 times 1 half x is just x, and 2 times negative 5 is, is negative 10, and then plus the 5, we get x minus 5. f of g of x equals x minus 5. So remember, it's supposed to equal x. And so does it? Oh. Okay, it does not. And so... I know right now that G and F are not inverses. G and F are not inverses. Now that seems to contradict what I just said a minute ago. Okay, a minute ago I said if you're going to show that, that two functions are inverses of each other, both of these things have to come true. But then here, I didn't do both times, and that seems to be a contradiction. Um, you might say, well, wait, I thought you had to test and see if g of f of x was going to equal x. And yes and no. Okay? So listen, listen for the distinction here. If they are inverses, both of those things have to be true. But in this example, I already showed that, that the first one doesn't work. And so we don't have to try the second one, okay? So, so let's, let's step out of, outside of math for a second, okay? Imagine, okay, that if all you have to do, everybody in this classroom needs to show me their car keys, okay? And if you can show me your car keys, I'm going to give everybody $10, okay? So I walk to the first person, and she shows me her car keys, and then she shows me her car keys, and then he shows me his, and he shows me his, and he shows me his, and then, oops, he doesn't have his. Okay? What can we conclude when he doesn't have his? Everyone's going to be mad at him. Right. We're not getting the $10, right? You're not getting the $10. Do I have to check everybody else in this room? No. As soon as one guy blew it, it's over, right? So I don't have to check everybody. As soon as I know he he didn't have his keys, then you guys aren't getting 10 bucks, right? Okay, but what, what, what's going to have to happen in order for you to get the $10? Do I have to check every single person in this room? If you're going to get the 10 bucks, do I have to check every single person in this room? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm going to have to check every single person. Otherwise, I won't know. So you're going to have to have them, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. Every single person is going to have to have them, and I'm going to have to check every single person. Okay? So there's two different things that could happen. In order for this, in order to show that these two things are inverses, you've got to check everything. You've got to check both of these cases, and you've got to show that both of these things are true. You've got to check every single person in this classroom. If you're going to get the 10 bucks, I've got to check everybody. Okay? But if it breaks down, I can stop. As soon as one person breaks it, then I'm not going to check everybody else. Does that make sense? And so that's why in this example, I didn't have to do the second part. The first part already killed it. Okay? Let's move on. Example four, find the inverse of each function if possible. 
it's kind of important that I included this language if possible. I wanted to remind you that you can't find an inverse if it's not one-to-one, -one, okay? So really what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to check and see if it's one-to-one -one first, okay? If it's one-to-one, -one, then we can find an inverse, and that's really easy. Pretty much you just switch X and Y. If it has an inverse, you're just going to switch X and Y, but let's see if it's even one-to-one. -one. So if I look at this first one, F, see how negative 2 goes to negative 8, and negative 1 goes to 1, and 2 goes to 8. Is that one-to-one? -one? That's one-to-one. -one. So that means it's going to have an inverse. Okay, if it's one-to-one, -one, it's going to have an inverse. So I can find F inverse. And that's really easy to do. All you do is switch X and Y. Negative 8, negative 2, and 1, negative 1, and 8, 2. So we look at part B, look at the G function. See how negative 2 goes to 5, and negative 1 goes to 2, and 1 also goes to 2? Is that 1 to 1? That's not 1 to 1, okay? If that's not 1 to 1, then that tells me that this inverse does not exist. In the future, you can use D-N-E for does not exist if you want to abbreviate. Don't just make up your own abbreviations, but that's one that's kind of accepted. Part C, notice how 2009 had two hurricanes, and so did 2013. Is that one-to-one? -one? No. So this inverse does not exist. 